Please, this one was behind a wall. Maybe he'd never know what she could do. Maybe, maybe they could just have a conversation, hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do, which would never happen so long as they stayed separate. <laughs> Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time, and it had kept itself to itself until now. More important was the little orange thing, which was looking at her in a way that she kind of, well, liked. As the square, who had shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura, she began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounced too, and then they disappeared when her back was turned. This pixel cloud ever remained, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there on another platform or something. saying very much.
Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. At some point, he would definitely tell her. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about, though. Yeah, probably best to wait. was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. to Laura as his girlfriend? Only if I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. The others seemed suspicious of Laura and the eager-looking pixel cloud of death which seemed to be watching her. Sure, they'd use her inherent bounciness to reach slightly higher jump points, but they wouldn't strike up a conversation with her. Chris found them rude. 
Rude? And always there. Others wouldn't drop it. Who's that cloud guy? Why is he following us? What's that rumbling, hungry sound he keeps making? Chris, can we just leave Laura behind?
Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seemed to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. cloud was getting closer. It was spending more and more time hovering around. Laura could tell it was making the others uncomfortable.
did not like the cloud. He'd long since stopped listing his observations, but he instinctively observed that this thing was bad. And he'd been right about the water.
Thomas could tell Chris was in love. And that was fantastic and everything, but that didn't mean they could let the doom cloud keep following them. Thomas was going to put his foot down once they got to the next level. Chris, Miss Thomas, wow, did not see that coming. He felt a little guilty too. Without his love for Laura and subsequent reunion with the guys, Thomas would probably still be with them.
Chris wondered if Thomas was still alive somewhere. going to go looking for him but he did wonder and and that that showed character probably abandoned Laura all that time ago. It began to dawn on her that she might not be the tragic victim she'd always assumed.
been the bait. She had a hunch that she wasn't needed anymore. John looked at Claire. It was just them now. She muttered something under her breath about a vow of vengeance. He didn't see the point. Fighting that thing seemed to be a pretty futile idea. They struggled to get to the next portal. John hoped that he would be the next to get eaten. He didn't want to be alone.
they struggled to get to the next portal. John hoped that he would be the next to get eaten. He didn't want to be alone. For the first time in a while, John didn't have an audience. He was alone. Leaping from black square to black square didn't seem nearly as exciting now, it just seemed empty. to jump the massive scary gaps for old time's sake. John gulped. He knew he'd never escape. He knew it was waiting for him. He decided to jump the massive scary gaps for old time's sake.
How do, ladies and gents, welcome back to Saturday story time with Thomas who's alone. Oh boy. How? How can a game where you play as various shaded polygons and do platform based puzzles <laughs> have a story and a set of characters? that you can relate to and that you end up caring for. How can that happen? It it is brilliant. And quite a large part of me wishes that I was recording or even if I'd got face cam out for the first time ever just so that you could have seen, well, actually not for the entire thing because most of it is me getting frustrated at the puzzles, but... <laughs> but um, just so you could see my face when Thomas got snatched by the pixel cloud I just I was like no <laughs> I really I've come to care about this little red rectangle and when he died or I hope he hasn't died I, the game's named after him I'm about a third of the way through it I seriously doubt that he's died <laughs> but I've come to, these little rectangles and squares have come to matter to me because they all have characters and the characters interact with one another. You have Thomas who's observant and enthusiastic, optimistic and then you have the immediate juxtaposition with the second character introduced to Chris who's pessimistic, who's paranoid, who doesn't trust the others and then you have John who's a bit of a show off a bit flamboyant, a bit cocky likes being the hero and then you we introduce to Claire who <laughs> I just I realised the, the stupidity of being about to say this about a blue square but <laughs> you have Claire who has self esteem issues and doesn't think she's worth as much as she is and doesn't think she has a power and that she's just slow and can't jump very high but then she can she can float on the toxic water that toxic water kills Thomas, Chris and John and so they need her and, and they all need each other that's the thing I mean Chris can fit through gaps the others can't John can jump high onto things the others can't Thomas is kind of in between the two but still integral and Claire like I said she can float and then we were introduced to the final two characters, the two characters that we didn't get in the last episode. We have Laura, who is paranoid, much like Chris. Laura paranoid because she's been followed by the sixth character, and it is a character, the Pixel Cloud, the antagonist for our little story doesn't have any characterization, it's just a cloud, no idea what it is, no idea what it's about. But it's a threat, and it's presented as a threat immediately through Laura, through Laura's worries about it, through Laura saying how everyone has abandoned her sooner or later, and hinting at something dark. And Laura's paranoia, Laura's self-esteem issues stem from that, because this black cloud is you know, following her, and as we see later, snatching people everyone from around her and she's a trampoline and that's cool <laughs> and you can bounce on it adds another element to the gameplay and that's another great thing every new character adds a new element to the gameplay Thomas initially on his own he's it's just a platformer there he's just jumping and then you add Chris you can't jump as high so you have to kind of work your way around that then you add John who can jump super high but the others, but Chris can't jump over him, which adds more to the gameplay. Claire, obviously, on the water, Laura with the bouncing. It, it, every new character so far has added to the gameplay as well to keep the gameplay fresh. This is so well done. This won awards for its story, and rightly so, and it, it, it won awards for its gameplay, and rightly so. This is so good. If you haven't played this game before, go and get it. 
go and get it in and, and play away ahead of me. This is going to come out once a week, so you should, you'll be able to. I, I am in love with this game. I'm going to play and play and play this. I'm going to replay this. I mean, I know there's no variant to the story, but I'll, you know, I'll leave it a year. I'll play. I'll, this will be one of those games that I'll play through once every six months to a year, just to play it again. It's that good. It's that caliber of a game, and I can't wait to progress further with it. I can't wait to see what's happened to my characters, my favorite, um, these characters that I've grown to like, despite the fact that they're fucking rectangles. And I think my favorite part of those last two chapters is that the two paranoid, pessimistic characters, Chris and Laura, form a bond. A bond is formed that I emotionally invested in between a golden brown square and a pinky purple rectangle. Are you for fucking real? <laughs> this is such a... How... I like to try and write stories. I have a, a degree in creative writing. That's what I've loved doing. It's what I do as a hobby. I like writing. I like storytelling. That's part one of the things I look for in a game, alongside gameplay, alongside simplistic graphics. I like story, a story that can get you invested. It doesn't have to be convoluted. It doesn't have to be a Michael Bay series of explosions. It doesn't have to have a twist or a swerve every 45 minutes. It just has to draw you in with character and storytelling. And that's what this has done so well. It's done it so well that I was invested in a love story between a square and a rectangle. <laughs> oh boy. Is there any greater mark of achievement in storytelling than that? 2D shape and you have me caring that it died. Magnificent. If you've enjoyed this as much as I have, leave a like on the video. If you haven't enjoyed it, comment, tell me why. If you want to see more of this hit subscribe this will come out every saturday for the foreseeable future until i finish it so until next time keep your love stories keep your love stories four-sided that's no don't actually don't have four people love stories that's not a good idea not a good idea keep it to two maybe three if you can pull it off <laughs> until next time see you later